hey guys, I'm going to try a fun little experiment here. I'm going to take a video signal and run it through some amplifiers. First we'll try some op amps and I'll even try some audio power amplifiers. Just want to see how the amplifier deals with the video signal. The output will be connected to a TV and we can see how it's rendered right on the screen. Why am I doing this? Eh, it's just for fun. Normally to test the bandwidth of an amplifier you'd use an oscilloscope and a signal generator and, and see how the amplitude decreases with higher frequencies and so on and so forth. Yeah, that's, that's the technical way, but this is just for fun. And I want to make it a little bit of challenge for the amplifier. It's got to have some gain. It's not just going to be a buffer. So the video signal comes in here and gets attenuated by this potentiometer. So that's adjustable so we can set it just right. It goes into the amplifier that has negative feedback and the gain is determined by the ratio of these resistors plus one because it's non-inverting. And the output will go through a resistor divider network. That means the uh, amplifier has to make a larger signal because you know with the same value only half the voltage comes out so it's a 6 dB decrease of signal. So yeah we may want to make it a little bit challenging for the amplifier. And when I do the audio power amplifiers I'll put a actual load resistor like a 8 or 10 ohms whatever I can find. So it's making the amplifier the power amp drive an actual load as well as the, uh, the video output circuit here. So uh, I'll try like a TL072, uh, LM833, any 5532 and um, LM4562 I believe the number is. So without further ado, let's get to it. Well, here's the setup. I have my power supply, which feeds the little circuit here. It has pretty much everything I've shown on the schematic. Well, underneath there's the two divider resistors for the output and adjustable potentiometer for the input. I'm going to use my digital camera. It seems to provide a sharp um, NTSC signal. And, you know, the output of the camera goes to the input of the uh, amplifier and then the output of the amplifier runs back to the it was kind of dark for this camera but oh, there you go you can see it plugs into the composite input of the television so I'll mount this camera on the tripod point it at the TV and see what it does Okay, what I did is I've taken a picture of my bench over there and I have the power turned on. So if I turn off the power supply, it goes off. Turn the power supply on, it comes back. And if I adjust the level, if it gets too low, then it loses it. Starts out pretty weak and then builds up uh, right about there I guess so well it does have color I think the color information is actually a lower frequency than the luminance you know the sharp edges but we are getting a color picture but it as you can see it's kind of smeary and soft and you do see some of the line, but everything smears off to the right. So, not too good. The, the moray pattern you see here, that's the camera resolution of the sensor in the camera. Seeing the dots on the TV. I don't know if I can get rid of that or not. Move it back a little bit, maybe. But yeah, 
it actually creates a picture which is not surprising I would expect that plus I've done this experiment when I was a kid so it's you know I expected to get some sort of picture but yeah this is the uh, TL072 it is not my favorite chip for audio and you'll see why it's kind of noisy compared to the other ones which is not really an issue here among other things but let's uh, stop this and move on to the next chip okay now I've plugged in an NE5532 very inexpensive and common audio type chip amp look at that picture much clearer nice color there is a little bit of horizontal blurring but uh, you can almost read the wriggle or wriggle sign there and it's much better than before very interesting well I'm going to next plug in an LM833 okay this is the LM833 and it seems to be a lot like the other one I'd have to do a comparison I don't know if it's any better or not pretty similar I guess the 833 was supposed to uh, be like an upgrade to the any 5532 but it never really unseated it 5532 from its throne you know it's such a good chip even for something developed in the 70s it's uh, you know it's still used because of its high performance and low price the any 5532 so okay now I'll try an LM uh, 4562 which is supposed to be a really high-end modern op amp for audio here is the 4562 and oh my god that is a beautiful clear picture I don't know if it can get any sharper than that I mean this is a uh, NTSC standard definition picture on a uh, 1080p television screen so it's the amplifier I see is doing a marvelous job it's <laughs> incredible let me adjust the level here see when it starts to cut out you get noise because these wires are not the best wow that is just amazing nice clear picture okay well that was very interesting now what's going to be really interesting is to see how audio power amps do like the LM386 and other ones so stand by let me get it set up and we'll go from there okay I have moved the connections over to the LM386 and I'll put the camera on the tripod and we'll see how it works well they're audio power amplifiers so I don't expect anything amazing well, let's power this thing up see what happens well I'll be damned we get a picture and I do have a 10 ohm load resistor on the output of that thing it's not real sharp though and the colors kinda wonky colors very weak but I am amazed that there's even a picture let's see what happens if I take off that load resistor the 8 ohm or that's actually 10 ohm 
Well, not much. It changed the background a little bit. Let me plug that back in. You can see as I plug it in and unplug it, it changes the the kind of the shadow contrast a little bit. So, yeah. There you go, an LM386 amplifying video signals. Okay, let's see what the TDA7267 can do. Okay, this is the TDA7267. It's my favorite low power audio IC. And you can see why if you watch my videos I made a while ago about it. Doesn't make a very good picture though. I think, see the uh, ripples? It's like oscillating or something. Maybe, maybe my grounds are not too good. Let's see the load resistor is a little warm here I'm gonna unplug it and it clears up kind of like the LM386 maybe not even as good I'll have to fiddle with the grounding here so I'm gonna hook up the load resistor and kind of get an oscillation the different layout of the chips make them harder to, you know, ground properly on these boards and get a good signal. So, yeah, I might have to try a better capacitor or something, bypass the power supply or something like that. But, well, for this test. I'll just say that it's not doing quite as good as it's not doing quite as good passing video through it. Okay, next up is the LM1875 and it'll be the final one I test. Well, here's the LM1875 circuit. Had to hook everything up here. I had this board already set up for something else. It's a little stereo circuit there but just using one side and I got it all hooked up let's see what it does and wow that's surprising it's got color fairly sharp I mean it's not as sharp as some of the best op amps I tested but I mean uh, I mean that's coming from a power amplifier power op amp LM1875. That is pretty impressive. I wouldn't expect a power audio amplifier to uh, produce that good of picture. I'm sure the full power bandwidth is not that high, but still, that's pretty darn amazing. Well, this was fun and interesting. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.